juniors, and welcome to your junior student meeting. We are very, very excited to kick off your post high school planning. Uh, this first piece is from me, Mrs. Kirk, high school counseling curriculum leader, to overview a few details that have changed uh, given the pandemic and um, college admissions. So some updates that have um, had impact because of the pandemic. First, testing and testing prep access. So what we know is that there have been cancellations starting uh, last March and really still occurring now. And so we recognize that students will have less access to testing, both the SAT, ACT, AP was exceptionally different last spring. And we anticipate those changes still occurring for kids and access to look different. Additionally, test prep has looked different for many of our students. Atypical spring 2020 semester grades, colleges and universities, are open to whatever schools have been doing. You should know that on our school profile, we um, indicate what hours look like so that it is very clear to the schools and universities what our grades were and what they stood for. That is indicated on there for you and they will accept those grades holistically. Extracurricular activities. Again, everything was canceled in the spring and while your resumes may read differently than they have in the past, uh, that is acceptable and reviewed through context and everyone's being given great grace with regard to what we all had to manage in the spring and again this fall because while we have our own experiences here in Upper St. Clair and in Southwestern PA, uh, our friends across the country are also dealing with different impact because there are parts of the country that everything is still canceled. And then adjusted family dynamics. What we know is that there have been a lot of changes in homes. Uh, folks have lost their jobs, there have been financial difficulties, and there are family dynamics that are different because some people are living with more folks at home and some are separated at this time because of health and safety concerns. College admissions updates with regard to testing. Test optional is something that is still out there and we're still managing and it changes daily really. For the current senior class, holistically, for the most part, schools are test optional. Um, some are test blind. But test optional means that schools will either look or not look at your test scores. Either way, they will look at your application. And so it's something that we really need to pay attention to when we're looking at the application process for you at this time. While you won't be putting your applications in until, say, next September or October, um, we need to start considering testing now. Our advisement will likely be that you take uh, tests, the SAT and or ACT, to have test scores and see how that goes. That said, we can decide late, later if you're submitting those test scores. We need to take a look at admissions, scholarships. We have school-based at universities, local, um, those that we give um, through Upper St. Clair, uh, through our community, and the national scholarships. While your school or university may be test optional, scholarships may require test scores. Um, additionally, the NCAA for athletes has always required for eligibility purposes test scores. For the class of 2021 and 2022, that's you guys, they've already indicated that they will not require test scores. So college admissions updates, timelines. We've seen some different timelines for the senior class and we, attest, and we, and, um, we anticipate them being different for the juniors as well. Um, that's something again, we will keep close watch on and we really need to pay attention per school. So we will be checking all of the time. Essays, essays become more important as do recommendations um, because they have a different bearing than they used to. For our seniors, again, no test scores, so they're really looking at those um, through a lens that they haven't in the past. And we're seeing universities accept letters of recommendation and even essays in a way they haven't before um, for review. Interview protocol. We've seen an uptick in interviewing for universities. Um, those who haven't before have added them as an option, and those schools who had them as optional are now requiring them. So again, as we take a look at the to-do list for requirements for application, uh, we will definitely take a look at what's available to you to ensure that we know what you need to be prepped to be doing and working on as we work through this process. But do know when we're looking at schools, you may see requirements for schools that maybe a year ago or two years ago were not in existence. ED, early decision, and interest. Early decision um, is something that is being utilized a little uh, different with a different weight this year, as is early action, actually, and offering interest to a school. 
uh, we are finding that that has become a little more important than it has in the past because a school or university truly wants to know if you have interest in going there. Um, character movement. So this is really through the lens of who are you and what do you offer to a university. And while they're looking uh, to build a school community, they definitely wanna know who you are as an academic and where you are with your extracurriculars. They also wanna know who you are as a human being. Um, this character movement was offered um, nearly a decade ago by Angela Duckworth, and she spoke about grit and perseverance. And this is something we talk to you guys about all of the time, and it's really come around. And universities are really looking at this essential skills that you possess and what you bring to the team um, on their campus. So that is something that you will likely have to write about, either in short essay or even a longer essay in your applications. Additionally, your counselors build great relationships with the admissions representatives, and anecdotal feedback is something that we will provide to them in conversations. We talk to them pretty regular, regularly, and when they're doing presentations with us, we are sure to maintain our relationships with them so that we can uh, do outreach on your behalf as needed. There's been some question as to deferred students, those students who are, say, current seniors and may choose not to attend school next year and defer for the subsequent year. Um, and we are receiving guarantees from schools and universities that that will not negatively impact the current junior class. And so you will have equitable access as you would um, if those deferred students had not chosen to do so. And then the idea of context and grace. Context and grace is really where the universities are looking at your applications through the lens of now, not the lens of two years ago. They recognize that things are different, that your access to summer programming, your access to sport and activity, um, your family dynamics may have changed, and they're offering grace. They recognize that things are very different than they used to be. And while maybe you have access to some opportunities, perhaps you've had to work or do something different or take care um, of someone in your home. And so they're really seeing your applications through your needs and what you have to offer. And so we will work diligently with you to ensure that the application package that you put together is accurately reflective of who you are as a student and what you offer to them as a student who will move onto their campus and become part of their campus community. Okay, so those are some overarching themes that we wanted to make you aware of. This is a really exciting time. Uh, we love junior meetings. We get a chance to work with you and your families and really get to know you um, in, in just a year. Uh, this process will be kind of complete with regard to turning in applications, if you can believe it. So if you wanna take a look now at this slide, it has the breakout meetings you're going to attend um, shortly after you hear from Mr. Marquis. So make sure you jot this down. Um, but you're now going to hear from Mr. Marquis and he's going to review Navians with you all. So enjoy that, make sure you pay attention because you'll wanna know how to do all of those pieces. Uh, and I look forward to seeing my students very shortly. Thank you. Marquis in the High School Counseling Office here to walk you through Navients for junior year. So a lot of the really cool features in here that we wanna cover for juniors. Uh, first off, I wanna just kinda of circle back at the very bottom of the page. You're gonna find graduation requirements. And this is something all of our juniors need to have completed. Uh, many of you have all these items done, but I think it's a good idea to go back and check. So here are items from like freshman seminar in ninth grade that we need to have as part of our career portfolio. Um, our 10th grade year career portfolio. So please go back, double check that you have all of these items completed. This all counts toward your graduation project, so every student has to have these completed. Here are our junior year requirements, uh, which is really tying into what we're gonna talk about today. So our goal using Navience this year is we're gonna build a list of colleges I'm thinking about. So if you click on there, um, as we're adding colleges to the list, they're going to show up in here, and it's just going to be sort of our, our running list as kids find schools that they like that kind of fit the profile that they're looking for. Um, in Navians, we have some really nice tools. One is called the Supermatch, and it's a nice little tool um, to help kids sift through all the thousands of schools in here. So let's say we want to plug in different uh, criteria, so we can search by state, so you can plug in certain regions, um, you know, different surroundings, and what it's going to do, you can see in the background, it's adding to the list of schools that kind of match the profile of everything that I'm looking for in colleges, all the important factors for me. 
So that's one way to sift through all the schools. The second version is called the advanced college search. It does the same thing, just a little bit differently. So we can go in and plug in all of the things that are important. I'm looking for a four-year school. I want it to be co-ed. Could be public or private. Um, let's say I want to be somewhere where there's a few more people. As I continue on, um, let's say I'm just looking for schools in Pennsylvania. You can pick different states. I think it's kind of cool. You can search by miles away. So you figure like one hour, two hours, three hours away. But as you add the criteria, view matches, you're going to see a list of schools that specifically match what you're looking for in terms of uh, schools. Um, so let's say we find a school. These little stars mean Gannon has an extended profile. So if I click on Gannon, what it's going to do is give me um, all of these pictures. A lot of schools will have videos that they have plugged in. Um, if it's a school that I really, really like and want to add it to my thinking about list, I just click on that little heart, and now Gannon's going to be on my thinking about list. You can see the pictures just give you a little flair for the school, what the kids look like, different programs, etc. As I scroll down, you'll find some different data about the school. You can change the um, average net price based on your family income, graduation rates, acceptance rates are in here for you. Um, one thing that I think is really cool is college overlaps. So basically what this does is give you a feel for, okay, I really like Gannon. You can see in here um, the top 10 uh, application overlaps. So uh, of the 47 kids who have applied to Gannon, 26 of those kids have applied to Duquesne, 22 applied to Pitt. So it just gives you an idea of some other schools that kids uh, are looking at um, as you're, you're kind of embarking on your search. Seconds for this to pop up. Um, other stuff in here, just general info about the school. Um, what I like is it gives you a feel for who's getting in. So it's going to compare um, your school, our school, like middle 50% for GPA versus the national average for kids who've been accepted to Gannon. SAT scores, ACT scores are in there for you. Um, information about like different programs that they offer. So all of the majors, their top areas of study. You can see all the different majors that Gannon offers. Information on student life, how many kids live on campus, breakdown by ethnicity, gender, age, uh, other housing information, clubs and activities on campus. Um, under admissions, you're going to find a lot of the data that we're looking for. So, you know, there are different policies for admissions, um, scattergrams for our kids who were accepted, waitlisted, denied. Um, down here, all the factors that Gannon considers in their application process. Um, recommended courses, or here the, the number of classes for English and all the other content areas that Gannon wants for kids who are applying. And then information about uh, their application processes and procedures. Uh, finally, you know, the cost, which is so important to a lot of families, um, just gives you a sense of what kids are paying in-state versus out-of-state, breakdown uh, by how much income, people are making, so some good information on financial aid is in there. Okay, let's take a step back. Um, other things we want kids to be working on in here, um, there's a really nice tool, and I'm going to go into the college section, um, researching schools. Something I like to show kids are, are the college maps. Uh, one of the ones I think is really interesting is the top 20 colleges our kids are applying to. So this just gives you a feel. If you're a kid who has no idea where to start, um, here's where other Upper St. Clair kids are applying. And it's a lot of the schools in the area, but you can see there's some different ones that are a little bit out. Um, but here are the general universities that our kids are looking, looking at. A nice map in the top 20 list. So I think that's really useful for a lot of kids. Um, some other things that I think are helpful in there, um, we want all of our juniors to be updating their resumes. So when you have some time, make sure you're going into your resume section and you're adding some items in there and keeping it updated, whether you have new volunteer activities, extracurricular activities, honors and awards, anything that you think colleges or your counselor might want to know about, make sure you're putting that on your resume. Some other things that I think are really useful in Navians, and this is something important to note. Kids always ask me, hey, I don't know my GPAs. Where can I find that? If you go under, go under the About Me section, under My Account, just your general information, contact info, but you'll find your weighted and unweighted GPAs in here for you. So that's in there. 
Um, another thing that I think kids will find helpful for is under my stuff, your test scores. So as you take PSATs, SATs, ACTs, our high school gets that information and we upload that data into your Navient's account. So we'll have all of your important test scores in here for you. So those are the main things for junior year you're going to need to know about. Um, one new feature that I really wanted to show you quickly in here is if I scroll down to Navient's test prep, um, there's a really cool um, SAT prep feature in here. Um, it's kind of similar to what kids have access to for Khan Academy, um, but what's great about this is it's all synced up with your Navient's account, and it really is a comprehensive program. It's something we've added new this year. Um, so what's cool is you can plug in when you plan to take your SAT, so which date you're looking at, and what it's going to do is chart out a, a customized course for you to start preparing for that SAT. So here is all of the um, how to get started, but I'll show you very quickly. Basically, it's going to go through a comprehensive study plan. It's going to help you kind of revisit some of those old, old you know, lessons that you've learned along the way, but also teach you strategies for how to take the test. So you can see in here how many lessons are plugged in here. And it's, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Um, lots of lessons for our kids. A feature that I think is kind of cool is they built in some SAT games uh, to help kids, you know, who are our gamers, keep engaged, to keep it fun and interesting uh, so they continue on with it. Uh, flashcards, so there's over a thousand different flashcards uh, for kids to do their uh, vocab practice. And if I go down to tests, what's really cool is you have your SAT diagnostic test, which is a full-length SAT. We have a full-length PSAT plugged in here. So once you get through those, our kids can take up to six practice tests in addition to that. So really comprehensive program in there. So if you're looking for your kids and you're wondering, hey, how are we going to fit SAT prep in? And especially uh, with the circumstances going on right now, here's a free version. It's open to everyone. You can do it at your own time. Um, so it's a really nice option for our kids. So that's everything that I wanted to cover today. If you have any questions, make sure you reach out to your counselors. Uh, moving forward, make sure you attend your junior planning meeting uh, so we can help you walk through all of this stuff together. Thanks so much for your time. Have a great day.